Welcome to Show Me The Money at Rugby League TV. Uh, I've just come back from a, an excursion in Mallorca, as, as you'll see the tan. So uh, <laughs> I did manage to watch quite a few games over there and I got sent some, so I've got plenty to discuss. I think we're going to keep Super League on this on this one. I think the lads have done a segment on the Champions from a bash, which I, th- I thought were fantastic. Uh, but we're going to try and concentrate on, on this one, but we're all ready to go. It's me and Show Me The Money. And uh, we're going to go through every game. So, Joe, just pick one before we start. Um, did we get any transfer news this week? Because we're going to do a separate one. But we've we've done about nine deals where we can discuss in the next, hopefully next week, we get a separate segment. But we're not allowed to announce it until the clubs announce it. So we've been really busy. I think you're going to you're going to love some of the stuff we're going to put out in the next seven days. Some shop moves. Uh, people wanting to get players off cap. So please please tune in next week. Uh, hopefully they'll be announced by then, and we can give you some uh, in depth background knowledge of what happened. But go on, Joe. Yeah. So the the big signing of the week was Matt Dufty to the Warrington Wolves, effective immediately. He actually played at the weekend. What do you think, Dad? Um, I think he looks the most exciting run of the ball. A bit like the the, the two lads at Wigan. I think he's got everything. Whether he can defend. And whether he'll, need, he'll probably need to defend it at the moment in the Warrington side, I think that's the side where people in Australia, are, to bring him early, is a, is a sign of where Warrington are. If yeah. we be honest, Warrington, are, you know, are obviously, you know, the run of results not great. Paul is getting the, the stick, and, and the club are under a lot of pressure. So they brought him over. I saw the clips uh, actually at the weekend, and he, he set he set a couple of tries up. He, his little step and his pass were sublime. Uh, but he got injured, which is not great for a new signing coming over. Uh, I watched his interview pre-signing, and he seemed so pleased. We had spoke about Daryl, you know, being the big dividing factor. Uh, let's hope Daryl, you know, Warrington stay, stay loyal. And listen, the comments are getting worse at Warrington. I mean, I watched, I watched the game, or I got the the highlights of the game. Apologies, and it is unbelievable. I was actually trying to listen to it live over there and listen to a win off. It looked like they were in cruise control, absolutely dominating the game, and then all of a sudden, you kept getting the feeling that Huddersfield were going to come back. And if they got, t- if the game got tight, you knew Huddersfield would win. Because yeah. that's where Warrington are. The actual ball control and killing teams off is not where they're at. And if you look at the chain of events again, like I say that the, the cruising. The, 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 I watched one of the tries; it was fabulous. I think Young Wardle intercepted one against his old club. And it's everyone's jumping up, and the atmosphere is electric. And then all of a sudden, when when we any pressure situation, when the pressure comes on, I thought Warrington, and I'd love to find this one out. I don't know what people think. Warrington seemed to take three penalties for twos. It were like penalty, Steph Ratchford penalty. Into it, I'd have thought Daryl in the day would have, you know, that's John Keir who likes to. Some people like to take the points on board. <laughs> Daryl, I'd have thought, I threw it in the corner and let's play and let's put this team away. I think that's where the nerves are. That's where everyone is at at the club. Take the two, take the two. If we draw, I think that's going through the team. I would probably like to see somebody go, kick it in the corner, let's play. We're, we're dominating this game. Let's put them out of the misery. So I, I think the heat's getting worse. I don't know what they've got this week. Uh, but I think... Know the, the the craving for a victory. If they play somebody in the bottom three, which Sam will find out for us now, but if they get somebody in the bottom three next week, and that'll probably be the biggest game of Daryl's career at Warrington. Because yeah, do they go to Huddersfield expecting to win? I don't know. Uh, obviously, any other point in the season, you'd say yes, you know. But obviously, at this moment, you've got to say. It's a push, in it? They probably knew themselves it were a push for them to win that game. Obviously, you go into every game expecting and hoping to win, but deep down, uh, with the current form, as you said, probably probably not at this moment. Well, if they if they get a Toulouse or a Hull KR or a you know maybe you know somebody else in that bottom four now, Wakey, you know that type now, and I think that pressure would be too much. So this, this week, Warrington uh, at Wigan, Friday night. Oh, so it's the opposite. <laughs> it's the opposite. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I don't know what to say because that is brutal. That is brutal, isn't it? That's, 
Now, is that less pressure because you're expecting Wigan to win? Maybe yeah. they can throw kitchen sink at them and, and, and give it a go. And by the way, I don't want to take this result away. Uh, this film were great. You know, what I saw and what I heard, they were great. Uh, Show me had a great day with the tries were Ashton Golden, Show me legend, Adam O'Brien. Owen Trout. Wow. It's, it, what it, a day. You know, it, were a, it were a great hour. I was actually jumping up and thinking the show me lads in his senior. So I think we got four tries for show me. For show me. So wow. personally, massive for us. <laughs> Sorry, Daryl. <laughs> Sorry, Daryl. <laughs> selfishly, we, we, the boys did great. And, and, and I want, you know, Huddersfield look like the only team when they're on. I think if you look at Saints and Wigan at the moment, who's the only team who you think if it's not them two? There's only I think there's only Huddersfield. Obviously, Catalans, but they they look a bit older to me now, don't they? They look a bit more ta- they've been up and down themselves, Catalans. So in terms of confident play, where the, like, I think the, the the thing I really like what you said there is put teams away. Huddersfield put teams away, don't they? They. It, well, they're in the grind, aren't they? They'll strangle you. They'll, yeah. they'll strangle if they get you. But, I mean, Saints are on a couple of bad results. We'll go through that in a minute. Not bad results for them. Great results, Alpha. But it's going to be a weird season. It's going to be, again, who can time the injuries? The injuries at the moment for people who are in Super League. I've never seen anything like it. And I keep talking to every coach, every CEO. I think some teams are going to the rugby league for asking for extra help. Because yeah. they can't get 17 teams out, it's the, they are being one. It's the same as um, the championship. They're having made, obviously, a few teams that I speak to. And it's obvious, same. it has to be the chain, it has to be the six again. There's not. There's nothing else it can be. It has to be, maybe the hard grounds, we've had some good weather, and that's a lot of strain, but the six again is making the game be played at such a fast pace. Physically, it's got to be really hard. And that's why they're getting these injuries. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. That's that's your own judgment. I, I don't mind the faster play. But physically, I think the team's going to have to be fit enough to play it. I think this year, after COVID, I've still got a few teams on the I said next year, I would be saying to every club, fitness spend fitness. all your money on your conditioners. Get them fit enough to play this new rule and then you won't be having this same problem, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed for the injuries. But be interesting if they do and then there is less injuries and then well, the show won't. Uh, and that's where they should have been prepped. To yeah. say, if you're going to play this rule, make sure each team, and we did, we did a, I think we did a podcast on fitness, I don't know if that's going out yet, Sam. No, they're coming out this week. That, yeah, where we, we haven't said things in past tense, but we did actually a podcast purely on where we thought why there were different between some teams in Super League being fit than others. And our opinions, I think the, the your young lad here and Kevin helped us a little bit because he's gone from Newcastle into an environment of full time at Cass. So it's be interesting. Hopefully, people enjoy it and, and think about. I don't know if you said to me tomorrow, as I say, Saints, Wigan, Huddersfield, the next team. If you look at the first game of the week, what Wigan? I mean. 48-4 against KI could have been 100. I spoke to Danny the day before, and Danny said, Danny said, mate, we cannot get 18 players. Or we have not got 18 fit players. I actually cracked a joke and said, will the King put his boots back on? <laughs> or one last show, and he just laughed and said, don't be so stupid. I think, he, I think he nicked your joke. He said that in comment. He said oh, that right, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I, 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 would, I thought, is he capable of doing what JP did a few years ago and saying, well, if I have to, I'll play, but... Um, just give a special shout out to Charlie Kavanagh and Connor Moore for making their debuts. Two, two young show me lads. Both give it a good go while they're on the pitch. Both sadly <laughs> fit the narrative of this uh, conversation and got injured. Charlie uh, dislocated his knee and popped. Luckily, popped in. We'll see. This, uh, I think the results come back. Connor, yeah, I think it's uh, but hurt his shoulder. So hopefully they're back and. Hopefully, maybe get another game later in the season. But well done, lads. Yeah, I think it's brutal for young lads to be playing at this time of year against a Wigan side. I mean, I mean, wow. Uh, I can't say the superlatives about Morgan Smith. Is and, and, and it, there's a little one I probably don't give. Probably gonna try and do this. But I don't give Morgan enough toffee because of how he is as a lad, and how he's and he's just a real. He's a, he was a real bloke at 17, 16 when he we first met him. And we were like talking to a thirty-year-old man. <laughs> People have got to forget, I think he's still 21. And the games he's played and the minutes he's played at that age is unsurpassed. I think it could be a record when he gets to about 24. He got the ban. They probably need to. But I think if they look at the minutes per age, 
he might go down as the youngest player ever to play this many minutes in the history. And I, I do believe that I'll be doing because he just seems to be playing regularly. You're looking at him now. You're looking at this Wigan side, and the, the, I didn't think Wigan particularly played well. Matty Pete actually sent me a message, and I said, "Look, I'm, I'm, we had a bit of crack, but I reckon Matty'd have been disappointed. I think he, he, he made a lot of mistakes in good ball, didn't they? Yeah, and I think Danny said another mention for Matty. Danny said after the game, Matty was so respectful. He said, "Never seen a coach be as respectful about our team." He said he rang me the next day to see how I was and how my team was. He said, I can't believe the ethics he's got. And yeah, he unbelievable. Massive on Matty. Danny was so impressed. Danny said, and I know Matty always respected Danny as a player because he thought he competed and that was a big thing. But again, shout outs to the way the Wigan club are going about the business. He's, uh, he's fantastic. But this is my worry. And Joe, stop looking at sandwiches because you, you're looking Sorry, yeah. Terrible. Hopefully my belly doesn't rumble. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> I think these top two or three teams... When you're playing an unforgiving team with injury like KR or you're getting a bottom four or five club with the injuries got an old KR's is ridiculous injuries at the moment. But what you know, that's a that's a club who if this season had gone different, I, I looked at the squad the other day and I was like, could have done something special. They, could, they, they you know they might still hit a run. They've had the worst season with injuries I've ever ever witnessed it. I think they were saying they might have played with six or seven hundred grand cap last week. If you think that's like one point six, it's ridiculous. But Wigan, and, and, and when they're on like that, it, it's not fair for even Sky to put in that game on. You're watching it, and I'm watching it. And it's like you're watching it, and it's just like, I hope this is a good spectacle, because with the amount of injuries going into Wigan, it, you couldn't get any worse for Sky. I bet your Sky are sat there going, Sam's into broadcasting. And you want viewers to watch it and appreciate it, but sometimes when they're watching a one-sided beatdown, and, and let's be honest... If we're going to have kept the ball higher completion, it could have been 80-90. That's, I don't know if that's good for the game, I'll be honest. I don't know if Sky can look at the fixtures and say, we need to know quicker what you're playing. If Danny and them say, look, we're down to the bare bones. Who wants to watch somebody beat somebody else 60-0? But that not that... That's just the... I guess my counter, I get, would be leagues in a bit of a more panicky place where you've got to think about that. But that, isn't that just sports? Isn't, I think that's just sports. I think every... Every single sport has an occasion where there's a lot of injuries at one point for a certain team and it goes bad. And as long as I feel like, as long as the communication was there by the broadcaster, Barry and them explaining, no, this is an extremely young OKR side, they're giving it an ex- a good dig here. This, for what you're seeing, is an extremely good dig. And you explain to the viewers that they're fighting for some, they're fighting because they're playing. You, I think they were. Obviously, two debuts. One, Zach, who played his second ever game. A lot of players who have been on the fringe amazing. all season were all giving it the best dig. I think. I get obviously. it. I get it. But and I think it's amazing for them players, the parents. The I club. guess it's tough for me because I watched it actually individually. I, individually, and That's I was I, I was quite proud. I was quite. <laughs> I watched it thinking, "Wow, I was proud of them lads. They give it a good go." And it was so for me. I enjoyed the game. But as a as a as a as a. Uh, we're going to the next Sky deal looking for it. I just think we're going to be... I don't know if you can change the fixtures that quick and how much notice. I think just sometimes, if you look at the next day's fixture, the warrington Unisfield game, you knew that I'd be quite competitive. Warrington had a right side out. I thought a really strong side. Unisfield had a strong side out. Um, massive props for Unisfield and all on, on, the, on the age difference they're doing and all. I think their average age this year is ridiculously low. Some at forwards there playing at young age. Their pack, such a young pack. Matt English, selfishly, Owen Trout, Oliver Wilson... Yeah. Crazy, but back to this game. I just don't know if Sky should, you know, for, for what we're selling as a package, got to be a little bit careful now whether they can bring and swap the games that quick because of the A, a teams needing more time off and that extra days, everything for them and all that. But I think we've got to be a bit more selfish with it. Right, it's over to Friday now. Uh, we've got Toulouse and Hull. Yeah. Um, 36 to Hull away at Toulouse. Uh, Toulouse were favourites going into the game. I always thought that Hull had had too much. Personally, I, I, I thought they didn't. And what the highlights I saw and, and spoke to a few of the lads, I think it was quite an easy victory. They played a different system, Hull did. They played, um, which I'm, try, I'm trying to work out whether I think it was good, but I think they played Jake Connor a little bit in good ball and Jack Walker a little bit in good ball and let, let them swap over. Well, in, I know in defence, Jake. Jake played as a centre in defence, didn't mm. they, to, to hide that 
I don't think he's hiding his defence. I think they're just trying to keep his energy high and, and let him come For up and play on. But quite laughing about Jack thinking Jack would going to do all hard work in defence and then when it comes to good ball, he didn't get a chance <laughs> to portray him. But anyway, he, he looked electric, Jack. He made a 50-yard break. He stopped, did a double scooper. I think all deserved the victory. I think they took Jack off simply to rest him. I think he'd been a bit of wear and tear. Played a lot of games after him. A lot of time off, but amazing for, for everybody. Toulouse are now, with what we're going to say next, Toulouse now go bottom of the league, two points behind. And I believe the averages on the uh, score has, have even it's nearly up. I, would have to, I don't have a proper look, and I'm sure somebody can think, but I think the goal average is really evened up now. Yeah, that's what, minus 199 to minus 202. Toulouse are now down. There you go. So now that's, that's turned it on its head, so... Fantastic result for Hull because there was a lot of pressure on. Not a great night's work for Toulouse. And the pressure, it, I think it's like a baton. I think one's passing it this way and then other one's passing it that way. Well, because I, I, I keep making, to be honest, I need to stop because I keep making these definitive answers. I keep wanting to give an answer to the who's going down question. So I think I said, I think earlier on I said, oh, wait, you're definitely down. Then I think I've said Toulouse. I think I keep making these big assumptions. And as you said, I think I'm just going to leave it week by week now because each week the, it's a see, they're just seesawing, aren't they? I don't think there is an answer and I don't I think, think we'll have the answer should... till the final game. I think it might come down to the final game of the season. Listen, the, the sucking, the sucking Warrington into it, I got the two results, which which has got them out of it. Then you've got Warrington being sucked right into this. Head, well, they are on. now. Wow, yeah, two points behind, yeah, because they're head getting... on into the battle and they've got Wigan, you know, uh, Sam dropped the hammer and they've got Wigan this week, so... <laughs> Do you want to lose? To lose play Hull KR at Hull KR this week. Oh. Then next week, Warrington against Toulouse. Wow. At Warrington. There you go. There you go. So I'm just give us the Toulouse for Hull KR is a massive game this week. In fact, I might try and get some tickets for that. It's at Hull KR. Hull KR will have a lot of injuries. I know Danny was saying they're just trying to make sure they get the. That's a massive game for both clubs. Toulouse will think it's winnable. KR need to. Probably make sure they don't get dragged into anything, make sure they, they, they get the victory. But the Warrington to lose game the week after now becomes the biggest game of the year. I think if Warrington get beat at Wigan, that, I'm going to say this nicely, that I think if Warrington got beat off to lose the week after, it, I, I think it'll just go off everywhere. I think that'd be the. That, I don't um, want to think about that, to be honest. I, I don't really want to. Uh, <laughs> if, if Warrington, if to lose beat Warrington, sorry, that will. That would be the most. <laughs> it's gonna. They'll be heart attacks, won't they? Because I think the well, I not, the, yeah, they'll be, they'll, they'll the certainly be they'll, the impossible could, will happen. Yeah, that they they're getting changes. dragged in. There could be changes. They could. You know that that's not what we want to hear. But you know, I'm going to speak honestly. They could be. Now, now the next result on Friday, which was the Sky game of Castleford Wakefield. Now, I actually tip Wakey to win this one. I got asked by a friend what he thought, and I said, I think if you looked at Wakey's team before the game against Castle's team, man for man, I had Wakey. Thought Wakey had one of their strongest teams out. I don't think they had many injuries, which is unbelievable for Wakey fans going into a game at this time of year that they nearly had a full team to pick from. It looked strong to me on paper anyway. Um, yeah. Castleford seemed to have a lot of injuries, but then I looked at the game, then I watched the game, thought, no, they haven't got that many out. And so. They had a few, though. They did have a few because I know Kieran got recalled, Jason Kieran, Kieran got recalled, Kane Robb all got. All, Whiten had a, Whitehaven had a nightmare, even though they ended up winning, but they had a nightmare because they had three players that they, <laughs> that they, <laughs> that they'd normally play, that they have been playing over there, recalled to go back to Cass because of the injuries they had. Well, I think Cass just put the look up for it. I think it's very hard to say that. I just thought Cass got out enthused. I've never seen a wakey side as enthused at Cass. Usually that's a right battle. They play for like a private cup and yeah. everyone's in it. But I was, I was mesmerised by the energy levels of Wakefield and, and Willie and Franny need a bit of, a, a bit of toffee here. You know, they've, they've engaged them to get... Everyone thought Wakey were on the way down. After oh my God, there's no... And, you know, they haven't got a lot of players. Con, blah, blah, blah. Bad news. All of a sudden they put a performance like that in. And the lads, when they scored the tries, they were jumping up the bopper with that unbelievable try at end. Ten people on his back. <laughs> it, 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 it's just that it, it, they are now the, the, to lose there you go they're now looking forward thinking another couple of who's oh, Wakey got this week Sam because if Wakey get a couple of victories here this could just be the most it, it's a lot more exciting the top end let me be honest it's a lot more exciting at the bottom than it is the top yeah 
and at the top you don't get into that business side for another like, six, eight week. This is what everyone's on about. So wakey, Sunday, host Catalan. And then next week, next Sunday, wakey again at home against Wigan. She's so to lose definitely have the easier fixtures here, don't they? No, no, because wakey, Catalan's recent form. And we'll discuss in a minute what's happened there. Recent form, I don't think you can get it on, but their recent form has not been great. And I think Wakey will fancy that at Wakey. I'll tell you now, Wakey will fancy that game. And they'll be there this morning. But a special mention, uh, and, and it's a show with the money TV rugby channel, so we are allowed to promote our own players. But <laughs> yep. I, I, I get asked a lot, and I hope people understand this. I get asked a lot, and they say, When do you see people, talent, and when do you, ID, how do you ID a player? And I said, there's no set routine. Each player comes through his own journey. We're lucky enough off some clubs who might say, come and have a look at this player. I think he'd be great for you to look after. He, he, he likes personal stuff and what we're very good at. We, we, we. And this is an occasion where you can, you can. I got asked to go, you know, and, and, and come and have a look at this kid. You nearly need to see him. Corey Hall actually said to me, there's a kid, I've just seen a try he scored. Uh, it's called Lewis Murphy. Well, it took me about 12 minutes to, to see what I thought I'd saw and I couldn't believe it. And then I asked uh, the background uh, of a friend I've got at Wakey and he'd said, you won't believe how many games he's not, he's not played that long rugby league. It's not been a lifelong thing. He's just an athletic lad who's come along and he's doing this. And I'm like, what, he's doing that, this after that many games? So based on the history of how your player comes through with this lad, I don't know if you remember, Joe, we then invited him, you know, we've got friends with him, the family are lovely, brought him back here. And when he played basketball and football that day, I was shell-shocked. I, I was just I wasn't there, you, oh, told, you told me about it. it. Just his, his hands are absolutely Michael Jordan, Joe, they are that big. He's t- he had a left left foot on football, it wasn't just athleticism. Oh, yeah, I was there. He could, he could handle it, he gave this free yeah. kick. Yeah, he did, yeah, he did, like, yeah. We're all stood there thinking he, he, he's, he's, he's huge, he's athletic. That second try, and let me build this one up for you. Mamu caught him from behind. Ten minutes before, he got the second break. He got the second break. Jake and Miller catch it, spins, gives him it. Mamo's got coming across. Mamo's got him covered. He remembered the first one because he never changed gear. He just thought it were floating. This time, he got the full kick. He went skip, skip, bang, and he accelerated. It's one of the and. and what an occasion! He's twenty meters away. He's done the old uh, Mikey Lewis. Did yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hands in the air. He does the swat, and he's and he's 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 a very shy kid, Lewis. He doesn't he doesn't talk himself up. He just lets his the emotion was all um, they're all diving on him like he scored two. Like Lewis Murphy, without a doubt, without putting too much pressure on any player, we are going to see a special. And I said this, you know, I have said it for a long yeah. time. The lads know I have. You're going to see a special talent and somebody who. who you know what? I, I, I'll even put this one up here. You're all going to think I'm mad. He, he could be as. If you look at the best wingers we've got at the moment, we are going to have got Ryan Hall. Yeah. And historically, we've got J- Jermaine McGilvery, who've been the England wingers probably for the last six years. Yeah. We're all looking for the next ones. It might be as early as this World Cup. It might be too soon on this World Cup. We have got some exciting players coming through. I am honestly, I cannot believe the excitement that is about with these young men who are going to come along. Because listen, we talk the NRL up, we talk this up, we talk the wingers up, we talk about Louis Silly run this season. They reckon went from eight meters away from the try vertical. He's done that one. It's unbelievable in air. He's got ten points from a GPS pace. It can step either side and it can hold a ball like it's a tennis ball in both hands. Ryan Hall. You know, went on to be called uh, what the world's best winger. You know, everyone said this. These kids look as, as athletic, Joe, as I've ever seen. And I've been doing it 15 years. But there's a few of these, Harry Newman, you know, the few, who are as athletic as any players I have ever seen, which is fantastic for the future of uh, uh, rugby league in this country. Thoughts? You're right, yeah. I think they're unbelievable players. There's even more you can mention. Obviously, we've done it plenty of times now, but yeah, 
it's hopefully. Well, we've got Corey a lot. I just wanted to make sure there, you know, the young. <laughs> oh, Lewis has just been unbelievable. I think I mentioned him early on in the season, been unbelievable. There's not been many games where he's not. I think every every other game, on average, he pulls off a world world mind blowing well, finish. Corey will be right in the mix of the young player of the year, won't they? You're looking at the young You've player got of the to year. You've yeah. putting them in. in Oh, top, yeah, they've got there in the, con- well, not in the conversation, they're front runners, aren't they? Well, they're in a team as well, that's not... Not doing well, but they're the shining stars, yeah. They, they, you know, a team's, that wakey side's trying its best and it's fantastic, but them lads are right among it, of, of young men playing in a team that's averaging a 40% win rate or whatever it is, so so massive props. Uh, and wakey, good on wakey. I actually said two weeks ago, and Sam remembers, I said, I thought wakey... <clears throat> Might, the fans might be the deciding factor. When they scored the try, the wakey fans at the cast said were giving it the full. They were electric. I, I, that's a massive... Toulouse don't have that. Toulouse don't have that many travelling fans where they're going to go home and away. And wakey know what to do with this. Wakey have been in this position since I've been watching rugby league. Usually every couple of years, Chelsea had a great run for a little bit, but sometimes they've been in this position. They know what to do. The fans know what to do. They expect to Do you get me? And I've said before, if Wakey went down, Joe, I'd be very worried for a club like that would just got the new stand past to everything. They, they need to stay up and they play like they need Don't to Don't you think Toulouse needs to stay up as well? That's a different That's debate. That's an expansion but... argument, isn't it? That's well, not, not, not expansion. Just, well, no, if you're a Toulouse fan, I think from what they're saying, they might go back to Ligue 1 in France is the rumour, obviously very unconfirmed, but... Saying if they get if they get if they go down they might go back to the French league and just say we give it a go which I think would well, be, tra- 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 be a shame to see wouldn't it that would be terrible so terrible yeah either way I- either way I think whoever doesn't come out of this is it's going to be sad maybe <laughs> I, I don't mean this as a thing but maybe even maybe let's like, say Warrington went down and you'd know they'd at least st- you, you know they'd be back up in the mix next year it might not I be a, think about that one, Joe. might not be a career and it might not be a <laughs> Club ending decision. Can't have that discussion. Can't have that discussion. Maybe they need to start having that discussion, but I'm not, I'm not having it. Certainly not. So then we move on. Yeah. And we've got the, the two best games of the weekend, probably. Huddersfield 32, Warrington 22. I think we've talked about this game, so we can move on from that. But, but you know, we'll reiterate again. Warrington are right there among it. Um, it's the biggest challenge of Daryl Powell's career. In my opinion, it's the biggest challenge of Carl Fitzpatrick, who we're great friends with. The chairman's a fantastic 12 of them will put the money in. Simon Rand said I'm one of the closest people I respect in the game. It's the biggest challenge at that club for a lot of years. So uh, Sam's just dropped the hammer on the fixture list. So get ready. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the fixture of the weekend. We'll build this up. We might even have a drum roll here. And Sam's going to tell us the stats, or you are, Joe. So the end result is Catalans 32 in Catalans. Lee Rhinos 36. Now, I've seen a little bit of the camera. And I think it were Rob Oakes and the guys at the end of the game sending us stuff because of the lead to the end. You and Rob's... I've never seen a celebration like it. I think they went through every emotion in that game. Give us the... Give us the SP. I think Sam is. I think at one stage it was they were. I think Sam said earlier it was thirty to six. <clears throat> Catalans were thirty to six up against Leeds Rhinos going into. Yeah, thirty-six up. They were. With about twenty minutes to go. Uh, around that, I've not got the times here on the. BBC report, but the last the last try by uh, by uh, Catalans was in the 50th minute, so about half an hour to go. And I think Pryor got simbined or sent off. Matt Pryor got sent off in the 54th minute. Fourth minute. So that tells you they've got 26 minutes with a man down. With a man down. Uh, Richie Myler come up, come up with some two great plays. Brad Hat- Dwyer hat trick for Myler. Brad yeah. Dwyer. And then the great try at the end by Aidan Caesar to Aiden win the Caesar, game. But I think if you watch the clips, Joe, and I, I, I got the clips, the old team deserve a massive respect. 
Um, what a game. It's probably the... I think that'll go down as the biggest comeback in a short amount of time in the history of the game. I'll find out, but I don't think there will be many teams. You love your, you love your big statements, Dad. Yeah, you it's probably, a big statement. You might be close on, on that all one. Your stats, we haven't got Mick here, and, and apologies, we've not seen Mick since Newcastle. We think he is <laughs> around the rugby league fraternity, but we haven't seen Michael at, uh, at the show. Hopefully, I've heard his text and said he's going to come back, but Mick would know this. Mick would be able to give you it exactly, but I don't think there's many teams in the history of come back in 26 minutes to that effect and, and the way they came back I mean every single try I, I text Rowan after the game and I said Rowan what a performance and he said they believed in themselves and they kept going believing in the skill and believing they can win he goes that's what I'm most proud of so Rowan's definitely encouraging a, a brand of rugby which is play even if you're behind play don't stop believing in yourself throw the ball about they didn't go to if you watch the I mentioned the Warrington Huddersfield game. Taking two points, taking two points, taking two points, managing the clock, slowing it down when they get in front. You've got Leeds are playing with non abandoned. It's just literally, let's go. The player I want to talk about, again selfishly, is is Cam Smith. I cannot believe do you see have you seen any of it? I've seen the highlights, yeah, but the last month he asked, I've just had a phone call off a top coach and he said to me, what is happening with Cam Smith? I said, well, I don't agree with you. It's the same thing. He, he, Again, it's Morgan Smith. It's Cam Smith's only 22, 23 year old. 23, yeah. My He's age. played probably 100 Super League games. People prejudging these young talents and saying they're, they realise they're only kids still. You know, the kids in a man's think, world. Yeah. Cam, Cam does look about 30 though to well, he, did, he, did, he did it I'm joking yeah, but, but that's probably been against him that yeah I think it has so I think it has and I well think, I think he, someone tweeted out actually it was on Twitter I read it on Twitter someone tweeted out Cam Smith is only 23 I think they're about 300 I joke about heart attacks I think they were because <laughs> he does look because he is an old looking tough, lad tough tough village in Castle yeah. I've said before because he's <laughs> He is an old looking lad, so I think a lot of people judge him on being a 26, 27 year old where he, where they should be at now, not realising where he's at now. He's still got years of potential left in him, so fair play, Cam, for showing him how good you really are. Well, he did. This is, this, this is again uh, for people who follow an ID. You know, I met Cameron as a young man, I'd already took Daniel on, I, met, I know the family really well. Jane had said to me, We want you to come and. So Cameron's been part of our family as well. He, we said it about quite a few, but Cameron's definitely in there who gets to the family barbecues. He's been part of our lives, but I'd never seen a 16-year-old like Cameron. Like He was it was something you'd never seen. He got thrust into the team early. He's been through all that. We've discussed it on the shows, but even the top coaches, and they've mentioned this, would you put Cameron in your England side? Think about you've got you've got you don't have to answer this because obviously because he's pure I don't well it's a tough got, question got, you think about it if you've you got play Morgan. Morgan Dolls you play Smithies and then you play Cameron three different types of moves forward if you go that way it gets in my squad but obviously it's a, it's a bad question because Morgan Dolls is my best player in the league so it's it's a tough it's it's not an answer really that's a fair reflection on where Cam is at to be honest because if anyone but Morgan Knowles in there, you'd say yes, he's very he, he should be in, he should be in a very good shout. But obviously, you've mentioned England that has the best third team we've had in probably since Ellery Hanley in the position. So I think I'm sacrificing um, Morgan Knowles to back row. I think he, he's played there loads of times. Played there up to two years ago. So, so has Cammy. But I like I like I'd like to see, and this is me biased. Yeah, I think this is. I'd like to see Morgan Smithies play there because he's the most tenacious young player I've ever had on my books, and ever. I've never seen a player like Morgan for tenacity and grit. And the, and against the top teams, you just have to have defence. Everyone that tells you, all the boys who played international say one thing: when you hit that top three, unless you can defend, you are in big trouble. So you've got to have that type of person. Cameron's improved massively in that area. But this is where I throw a spanner in. We've not had a loose forward with that type of skill level. We are playing him since, I don't know, I don't know how we could come back. Maybe Lee Crooks, I think you come back years and years. Ellery played a bit of loose where you've got that. But we haven't, we haven't had shot. sorry, apologies here. I'll, I'll take that back. Sean O'Loughlin, one of the greatest players who played that role. 
or ten years. So big, big sorry on that. But I just love the way Cameron shifts the ball as well. Do you know when you've got a play and you've got your, you've got your both your half backs called split. They're not allowed to cover the same side now. We play split. Well, we don't. Well, no, it's now reverting back, isn't it? Well, hopefully. Well, I think it is, and if you look at Leeds and that, it's reverting back hopefully, now. Rowan's the way definitely, but the, historically, most teams play split. Then you've got your hooker, whose job is to get it to either them with Cameron. You're helping the hooker, you're helping the ass, because you've got somebody who can come in, sink in, and just puts 25 yard pass either side at wrist to where he wants to go. If the defenders slide early, Cammy's now got the confidence to go himself. That's, that's why he's making these clean breaks. They all think Cameron's going to sort of play lateral. All of a sudden, he's going, no problem, bang, bang, gone. He had something different. He had something different. Now, historically, they would have said Cameron's defence is not that level. He's improved massively, his work rate and defence. Massively. And I think Rowan Smith deserves massive, massive plaudits for saying, this kid, go out and play, you're that good. You're that good, just go out and play what you see. You've seen everything, go out and do it. So I, I'm putting a. I want him in the squad. I want in the captain. team of the squad. I'm, I think bottom, I'm, I'm saying squad because. Well, yeah, I'd say put. I'd say maybe the squad is a good lad as well, isn't it? So it'd be really to have in the squad. But I don't know. I think a tough one for the team, and it. He's a fantastic person to have around. That's what he's I mean. A he's a leader, isn't he? Yeah. Is so. he the next Leeds captain, Joe? <sighs> next Leeds. Is that a contract? But <clears> he's only got. This is not. Yeah, I don't give him heart attacks. Um, <laughs> the, the next. Um, the next Leeds captain, if obviously if, if he stays there, he would. Yes, he's a, he's a leader of men. It's, it's him or Big Mick. From what I've seen of the camp, it's so him, the it's him or Big Mick in it. They, Big Mick, Big Mick's the daft one who likes a laugh in all they in respect. But a serious likes world a, class player. But world class players. So that's the that's a the fun mix. Lad. Brilliant. Then you've got Camus. Bit more of a bit more of a tough lad, and a rougher lad, and he's. I won't say rougher. No, I think it's a bad thing to say. I don't think there's all. And does it not, mean what I mean? In my sense, they the, the, the travel together. More of a street days. lad, I'll say. Then, yeah, if I maybe think I don't. He's, he's an historian of the game. He's been brought up around it with his brother and his family. I think he's been in Cass, where they just talk about rugby every day. Mick's probably come from a different background, so he hasn't had that rugby league. I'm hearing him every day of his life, but what a partnership! But I did say this to. When Richard Agar were going to make the, the, the thing, I said, give it to the young lads. They, they could be the driving force behind the club for the next 10 years. They, they don't talk about leaving the club like others do. They don't talk about, oh, that's, these lads could be the you know the leaders. And if Leeds are ever going to come back and, and do what they did in the A-Day and do the titles, I think it'll be because they keep them too. I think that's my complete thing on that. So, big up Leeds Rhinos. Rowan Smith, unbelievable job. Right, we've got the last uh, result of the weekend, and what a result. It's Salford 44, the great St. Helens 12. Over to you, Joe. So, you, 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 you know. Yeah, no, I think that's the, uh, I don't, maybe the shock of the season. I don't, maybe, I don't, I, I know I know we love our superlatives here. Like, I, that, might, might, that might be the shock of the season. I think Saints definitely do have a weak side. Of, we said injuries is definitely... Taking a hold of Saints at the moment, aren't they? But as as you've also said, so are all teams. Salford, I've said before, getting better, better. They've had up, they've had some bad results. They've had some brilliant results, and you never know with Salford. Salford can be the best team in the league one week, and one of the worst the next week. I think what Salford need to find now on the back of this win is a good run of form and get which they which they are doing now. Keep on this good run of form and get get themselves near them playoffs and get themselves. Confirmed in the playoffs, I think they're now they're now sixth. They're now sixth in the league after where they were a couple of weeks ago. I think they were, I think they were ninth, tenth. They were talking about them in the relegation. We did a relegation thing. They were in the relegation conversation, and they were closer than Hull KR and Warrington were at that point. Now they're sixth. They're they're in the playoffs. So fair play to everyone at Salford. They've really, they've really. They've really done amazing things, haven't they, around the club in the last in this whole season, and they finally got it. They're finally getting it right. They play brilliant rugby, don't they? With well, Bro- they got in grand final two years ago. So to be honest with you, it's, it's Watson got them in the grand final, didn't he, in the Challenge Cup final? So I think they had that that year last year where they struggled a bit, but I think this year it's it's Paul Rowley who's doing an unbelievable job. I think Paul actually texted me last time we spoke, and he said thank you for the kind words, but. 
there's some more kind words what Joe's saying there Paul it's it's a fantastic achievement to beat Saints by that wow and I've just looked at the Saints side it's not that weak you know it looks oh it's not but yeah it's certainly some injuries but it's, it's not there's some key players there they had all the international a lot of the, you know it looks looks an unbelievable result so the Salford Red Devils are on the are on the charge and Saints I mean they got away with a last minute at over it last week they got away with a last minute victory I think uh, Against one of the against what it wakey wakey yeah yeah uh, the sudden death so I think Saints are wobbling a little bit um, be interesting how they finish now in the next two or three four five week but all to play for and, and I'm gonna ask you a question here Joe and, and hopefully I'm not having a lot of time to think about it so I know it's hard for you to think quick oh um, he's got he's got his own back there well done Dad well done he's got so his own back I, I'll ask you here Joe <laughs> he's waiting for that who one who wins the league at this stage you're asked. Who who have you got based on who's coming back? I mean, you look at Saints. Wigan Warriors, I don't even have to. Wow. Matty Pete's Barmy Army. Matty Pete's Barmy Army, they've, they've hit, they've, well, they've, they've been up and down the last couple of weeks, but I think they've got the talent there where Saints have got a couple of injuries. Long term. Long term, which I think's the key. That's what I was going to say. It's the, that's the key, that they've got long term injuries there where Wigan's are more... That, that, the team's pretty strong at the moment. There might be one or two missing. I can't remember off the top of my head, but most of the big names are still playing, which if they if they stay fit, I think Wigan have got it all to play for. And Wigan getting better. They, they, they're, they're trying to figure... They're still, they're, they've been up and down, aren't they, the last couple of weeks. They lost to Leeds, didn't they, quite heavily. But they've whenever when Wigan are on, I don't think any team in the league can stay with them. It's just whether they can hit, get it on on that grand final day. Which I think they will make. I'm willing to make that cut. And if I had to ask you a team who can make a late charge for the six and do it, you know, maybe give it a throw the kitchen sink, would it be Salford? Would it be Lee Rhinos? Obviously. Would it be Hull FC? No, it wouldn't be Hull, sadly. I think they've got too many injuries, too many short to I think they've put together to give it a good run to finish off but I, I think they've got too much there for when them final big games obviously in the playoffs when they'll hit four three four big games in a row I don't know if they've quite got enough in terms of they've had a massive injury hit see I think both we said last week both whole clubs have been de- decimated with injuries so I think I'm, I'm not sadly I don't think I'm going to chuck Hull in but you, I think Salford more than Leeds. I think Salford have shown it all year. Salford, Salford have pulled off big results all year. They've just not been consistent enough where they're finally hitting consistency now. And they're getting better. They're getting better. They play They play extremely good. So do Leeds play extremely fun, exciting would be to watch. But so do Salford. And Salford have got... Salford just... They've, they've, they've shown that they can do it consistent, more consistently than Leeds can, I believe, at this point. Sam, can we just get a league table up? Uh, yeah, I've got it here. Mind. Oh, we've got chosen it. Just, just give us the points, Joe, the top eight. What, starting from number one? Yeah, yeah, just look in the cameras. So it would be great to hear your views, please, your comments. If you come on, uh, show me show me the money on Uber League TV. Please put loads of comments. I know you think it's going to be at the top at the end of the year who can want to win it I think the relegation battles is exciting but please we only so, we can work with next year and next week we can work off your comments and get some great questions Mick's not here to deliver them all but please get out there and keep us going with some content right we've got St Helens number one uh, at first with 34 points so I think Wigan are second with 30 so there's a two game win difference there obviously I think Saints might be at the top the end of the season but I'd, Wig, uh, Huddersfield a third with 27 so three points behind Wigan then Catalan same games yeah all on the same games Catalans 26 one point behind Huddersfield at fourth Castleford a fifth with 22 four points behind Catalans Salford sixth on 20 two points behind Cass Hull FC joint with Salford on twenty points, but obviously Salford have got the better, the better points difference. Leeds Rhinos nineteen points in eighth. Hull KR eighteen points in ninth, and then Warrington Wolves fourteen in tenth. Wakey eleventh, twelve, and then obviously you have to lose with ten points. Brilliant that you know you look at that and you've got. Saints obviously four points. Can't see them dropping nothing. But them and Wigan, I, I, I 
I think we can honestly say that. That that six, good on the rugby league here, because that six is going to be so exciting. You've got Leeds, you've got Salford. So you've got in the conversation now, that's still two. You've got probably, Catalans are probably safe in four through 26. So you've got to go Cass, 22, Salford, 20, Hull FC, 20, Leeds Rhinos, 19, Hull KR 18, so 18, yeah, so you've got you've got four points difference from 5th to 9th. And Hull KR have got to lose, Sam said this week. That, so they could go, they, they, I think some of the others might be playing each other, so Hull KR, wow. Do you know what? What's absolutely unbelievable about what Joe's just said there is, the fact is you're looking at some teams where you think about a really disappointing year. Like, you look at Hull and you're mortified. You look at KR, probably as a KR fan, you're saying, yeah, we had a mixed bag this year. Leeds Rhinos, up to a month ago, worst season ever again, but they've all got a chance to make it playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Cass, yeah. Cass at times, right, this has been up and down, up and down, people saying, oh, Cass, I'm not even here. Well, it, by that, they have. Yeah. Because they seem to, we, we wanted a competition that shared the points. From the top to the bottom, there's only about 16 points difference, is there? What's, what, what, what Saints is total? What, from Toulouse to... to Toulouse, yeah, Toulouse, what points um, Toulouse got? Saints are on 34, yeah. Toulouse are on 10. So 10, so there's 24 points difference from top to bottom in this. I, I, I can't believe how much it's shared out now. It's unbelievable. That is exactly what the Super League, you know, all them years ago when they did it, they wanted it to be a fair competition and a little bit more... Well, you've got it. I'd it, say week on week, you can't tell who's going to win, can you? Like I said, I've, we've all made... Well, We've all made tough statements. This relegated there. Saints are definitely going to win. We, uh, Huddersfield are top two. Like We've all made these statements, but I think what the season shows is yeah, I don't think there's any answers yet. I don't think there is an answer yet to be to be announced. To. Well, you've got Saints just getting beat at Salford. You've got Wigan getting hammered at Leeds last week. You've got so the top three sides have been consistently... And Toulouse getting... beat Saints a couple of weeks ago. It's... You've had everyone beat each other, really. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? It, 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 we'll finish on this note. It, it's quite, it's quite weird because you, you think about it, will it come down to injuries? Which teams? And it might be something we can do on on a separate podcast if Sam's available. But it'll be interesting to write down the percentage of wins for teams when they've had certain players playing, and when that player's not been there. Because you look at selfishly again, please. It's our, it's our station. Lewis Dodds's percentage of winning at Saints will be a really high. It'll probably be ninety <laughs> plus. Yeah. You look at now without him, uh, and, and I'm serious here because again it's a lot of pressure, not pressure, but a young lad who's you know we're very close to the family. But lose would Lewis Lewis Dodds not be there for this year? Has it had a massive effect on how the way say it, it, it has to have done? You, you can't. I, I, I don't think you can say massive, but yes, they're they've now they've gone from looking unbeatable. Well, not um, yeah, they've gone from looking unbeatable to looking beatable, which is a, a massive statement, all on the back of maybe one injury, which is Lewis Dodds, really, isn't it? So, and, and you look at the going into the playoffs, and you look at players who are missing. You look at KR. I think I always thought with KR, George King were a big thing getting George back. So I think he leads the pack. He's there. He's there. Pack leader. When George plays. I don't know what the ratio is. We might have to pick a player out in each club, but I'd say when Big George, you know, Mikey Lewis is out now, the, the, the dagger's out for the season. So they've got Rowan and uh, I think the coach come off injured, so God knows, but I always think we all okay, are George King. I think Cass, I think most people would say we Cass. Obviously, True is out now. That's a massive loss for them. Paul McShane would be a, you know, a, a, a body blow, but if you look at most teams, that's where I think which team Joe spreads that out. Do you think Leeds are quite good at not having that one or two when it makes that much difference? I'm going to challenge you on that. Yeah, I'd say out of out of the teams I'm looking at now, you'd say probably Cass spread it out. I think Mac has been there and thereabouts, but they've won and lost with Mac. I won't say he's the be all and end all. I would I I would put a lot of thing on Chewy, but Chewy's been injured and they've still been getting the wins. Uh, Hull FC. Obviously, the opposite you'd say, injuries, yeah. but you'd say whether <laughs> whether the big man himself plays well or not is uh, is the big man is the big man Jake, Jake Connor, Connor, of course. Like whether Jake Connor gets it plays well or not is the big decider there on a lot of games this season. I'm sorry about the other players, but uh, the other players they've got a brilliant squad. But if he's on it or if he's not on it, 
decides a lot of Hull FC games. Salford, Salford pretty... Well, Dan Sarge doesn't forget things you don't, but I always know it's when Dan plays, they look a complete team. If, yeah, Watkins good comment. You know, there's yeah. one or two there where you go, I think the half-back would be paramount to Brody, him. or... Yeah. yeah, he'd be paramount to anything that they that they do. I don't know if Toulouse have got that player where you don't play him, you go, God, if he's not playing, I don't know whether they've got that player, but... Do you need that player? Because Wigan... Well, say Leeds... Does Wigan's whole season depend on two players? No. Three players? Yeah, I've chucked Morgan in there because you think Morgan. No, no, I'd say no. I'd say even the fullback. I think I think they'd have enough now. Whether they could beat Saints at grand final without the fullback and Bevan and and and, and you know that type. But do I think that we're going to have got a massive enough squad to handle it? Yeah. But Leeds, scared. I'm going to throw it in here. Leeds seem to have a way of not relying. So one of their biggest players, Joe, this year on money wise is Austin. Austin's not played. For how long? For the past, whatever, four or five, four or five weeks, or three or four weeks. You look at other positions. Now I think Leeds have got a big enough squad. To, if if Ashanley Sutton goes out, they seem to have cover. If at the other side uh, they get they get the right winger. He, but they're just. They're, but they have had a, been out but for three quarters a, of the season. But they've had a fairly bad season though. So is that does that mean as much? You know what I mean, as you said, to lose to wake wake, he's probably got. Bopper, you'd probably say, is the big one. Warrington haven't really got anyone that's in or out, and it makes a massive difference. KR, I'd, I'd, respectfully, I love George, but I'd probably disagree with you, George. I've seen George be there when they've been hammered or not. He's a leader, but I don't think he's as much as comparing it to a Jai Field or comparing it to, obviously, I, I think St. Dodds. I, think I don't that know important. if he's that imp- I don't know. Well, that's what we'll do next week, is and, and we'll leave it that's on That's a tough stat to find. Yeah, yeah, we'll get Mick or we'll get somebody to prepare a player from each club or maybe to pick two or three out and we'll do a show on if they've played, this is the percentage when they haven't played, this is the percentage. It should work itself out over a year that how that's affected. I, know, I, I think it has probably had a massive effect on some clubs. And I think uh, the one or two clubs who can go into this next period, I think that'll determine whether this was going to be in the grand final and the playoffs. It could determine everything. Like I said, it's a lot of pressure to put on a young man like Lewis Dodds. But I, has it had a you know has it had a massive effect having to play Wells be at halves with Lomax instead of at full back or do you know having to change that round has that had a massive effect on it? I think it probably has. Yeah, but they've only lost four games this season. I know. So I don't know if it has that much. But they scrape. I'm not saying they scrape. But, but you've said Leeds. Leeds are in. Leeds are eighth. Saints are first. Still had, first. Still first. I had Saints top at the start of the season. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, have, I didn't have Leeds in top four. Exactly. But exactly. So there's been no. So Leeds. It, there isn't a play otherwise. But then Saints were top and are still top. So some well, see, some teams. I reckon. It, I reckon with the current layout of Full FC, if Jake Connor were injured for the whole season, it might be they might, or let's say a if if Jai Field is not at Wigan, are they st- are they still top two? I'd probably say no. I'd say they're definitely a very, they'd be a very good playoff team, and they probably have a, they might have even have a chance of getting grand final. They would have, they have the performances and the electric the electricity that they've had this year. You'd probably I'd say I'd argue possibly now, right. On that note, well done. We'll come back next week. Hopefully we've got a full team again next week. Please keep watching. Show me the New Rugby League TV. I hope that helped. It's the full 80. Without the uh, the game call, what me and Joe have... Uh, we think we've done a good job. There you go, Mick. And hopefully Mick, you know, he, he, he's seen on a normal playing field in the next couple of weeks, I say. I think we had 32 pubs in the last three weeks of sending have seen Mick. They've sent the messages <laughs> in. So, looks like he's having a ball of a time. Uh, good luck and see you next week.